All right, there's been a couple situations where we have gotten the square root of a negative number so far while we've been doing the quadratic formula. So this section talks about what do we do with that negative under the square root. So let's go down through here and check out what this negative square root really is. And just to reiterate, you've got the square root of a negative four, let's say. Well, negative times a negative would equal positive and positive times a positive would equal would equal positive. So we can't really do this. And that's what causes the problem. Like what is the square root of a negative? And so that's where this section comes in. So an imaginary number is the square root of a negative number. So it's called an imaginary number. The letter I stands for this imaginary number. And this is for the square root of negative one. We're gonna fill in the blanks here to complete this list and then use this to complete the example. So we're gonna factor out any negative one from the number to make it positive. And then we're gonna substitute i for the negative one in our result. Take the square root of the positive number and then write the product without a multiplication sign. Okay, so we're going to take the square root of negative 4. We're going to make that equal to the square root of positive 4 times the square root of negative 1. So we factored the negative 4 into 4 times negative 1. Then we can take the square root of 4 is just 2. And the square root of negative 1 is now this imaginary letter i. So our final answer is 2i. So we now get this imaginary answer whenever we have the square root of a negative underneath. All right, let's go fill in some chart values here. So just a plain letter i, its value is just i. But when you have i squared or i times i, the square root of negative one squared would just be negative one. So this is the definition, i squared equals negative one. Keep that in mind for later. i to the third can be broken down into i squared times i. And so if we know that i squared is equal to negative one, negative one times i just gives me negative i. i to the fourth can be broken down into i squared times i squared again. And i squared times i squared, that means that by definition, we're saying negative one times negative one. And negative times a negative is positive one. i to the fifth can be broken down as into i to the fourth times i. And again, i to the fourth, we just figured out was just positive one. Positive one times i is just i. i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i. That equals, if I add those all up, that's my invisible 13. And so i to the fourth is one times one times one times i, so the value is also just i. Okay, so what is a complex number? Complex number is a number that can be written in the form of a plus bi, where a is the real part of the complex number, and bi is the imaginary part of the complex number. So here's my real part, and here's my imaginary. So what part's real, what part's imaginary here? 
the one is the real part and the imaginary part is three I. If it's just two I, zero would be the real part and two I would be the imaginary part. If it's just 15, then zero, the real part would be 15 and the imaginary part is zero I. Now let's do some actual work with these imaginary numbers. So for example, if I'm just adding these, you're gonna treat I like a variable, just like when we did combining like terms of polynomials. So three and 10 combined to make 13. Notice how we grouped those together. And negative eight I and two I are negative six I combined. So we're just combining like terms here. When there's a negative in the middle, remember that the negative changes the sign to everything in the back. So this is gonna give me 11 plus four I plus seven minus six I. And now we're gonna go combine like terms. The 11 plus seven is gonna give me 18. And the four I minus six I gives me negative two I. There's my final answer with combined like terms. And this right here is an I. All right, now this one, we're gonna do just treating it like variables, again, that I, but we're gonna FOIL it. First times first, nine times five is 45 outer times outer, five times six I is 30 I, negative three times nine is negative 27 I, and negative three I times six I is negative 18 I squared. Now when I'm combining like terms here, 30 I and negative 27 I in the middle there is gonna make a middle term of three I. And this 45 is here plus, now back here, this negative 18 times I squared, remember by definition, if I go way back up here, that I squared is equal to negative one. So this is gonna turn into a negative one for the I squared and negative 18 times negative one is just 18. So now I combine those like terms also, 45 plus 18. So the real number is gonna go in front and the imaginary part goes at the back. So 63 plus three I is my final answer. Now let's do division. 3i plus, sorry, 3 plus 2i over 1 plus 7i. One minus 7i over 1 minus 7i. And by doing this, on the top, we're gonna get three minus 19i minus 14i squared. And on the bottom, we're gonna get i minus 49i squared. And at the top, this simplifies into three minus 19i minus 14 times negative one. So that's gonna become a plus 14. Sorry, it's gonna become, so three, So I think I'm just not gonna count the division for you guys on this quiz.
Um, division is a math three topic, and I'm just realizing how complicated this is going to be to have to teach you guys. So let's go ahead and leave the division off this quiz and off the test. Okay. Um, for those of you that want to work through this just for fun, check out the answer over here so you can see the whole thing worked out. But um, I'm just looking at it and realizing I don't want to put this math three topic on this quiz. So we'll leave the division of the complex numbers off. Okay. End of the study guide.